Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Gaming On Board. And tonight we're going to be looking at two games. One that became very popular and was a big hit. And then another that some people are claiming killed the first one. Can you guess what the games are? So first, we're going to look at Splendor. Then, we're going to take a look at Century Spice Road. Or Golem Edition. Either one, there's just different art. The gameplay is the same. So uh, we're going to look at uh, the mechanics in each game, um, how they're similar, how they're different, and uh, then you can decide if you think that Century has killed Splendor. Let's go down to the table and check them out. We're going to start out with Splendor. This won a Golden Geek Game of the Year in 2014. It's extremely, extremely popular. If you've been to any game shop, I'm sure you've seen it played or at least on their demo shelf. So, in this game you're collecting gemstones in order to purchase these cards that uh, gain you more permanent gemstones in order to gain the attention of the nobles. Um, the game ends as soon as one person reaches 15 points. Um, and that includes the points from these nobles here. So basically every turn, you're going to choose either two of these uh, gemstones, any color, or one of three different types. And you can only take two uh, if there's a certain number left in the stack, depending on uh, how many players are in the game. This is a setup for four players, so we've got four nobles, one for each player, plus one. So for a two-player game, there'd be three. Three-player game, would be four. Four-player game, there'd be, there's five. Um, so, like I said, you can take two of any one of these. And these are actually like poker chips. They're really, you know, everybody made a big deal out of these. They're just, they sound good. They feel good. There's just something about clacking those poker chips together. Um, so you'll get one of three different types or two of one type if there's enough in the stack another option is to draw or uh, take any one of these cards into your hand or the top of any one of these decks into your hand and take a gold tile the gold ones can be anything it's basically a wild it's a wild gem then once you've accumulated enough to purchase these cards, you'll see the cost on each card. So this one's going to cost you three blue, two red, and three black. So somewhere along the game, you will have accumulated three blue, two red, and three black. And once you've got them all ready to go, you say, okay, I'm buying that card right there. Turn your chips back in and take the card. So now that you've purchased this, you have a permanent red gem available to you. So right down here, this will be in my permanent stash. Let's put it right over here. Then this card will get immediately replaced. And usually you won't go for those high cards first. You'll go for like three whites. It's a lot easier to get. So over the game, you'll choose which gems to take, purchase cards, Cards will get replaced, and they get more expensive. And some of these have point values on them. Remember, when someone gets to 15 points, the game's over. So you'll be getting these. They'll be getting replaced. And then you see, as you purchase things, your available, your available gems become more and more, and it costs less and less. To purchase things so at this point I've got three reds and three blacks so it would cost me zero coal or black to purchase this and only four red because I've got three here so one two three let's say I got four red somehow along the way and get this one by only paying four red chips and this goes out let's say I bought this one this goes out say I bought that one and I bought that one and um, 
So what I'm trying to get at here is if, for example, I have four, four diamonds, four rubies, four onyx, I'm guessing. So black, four black, four red, four white. <laughs> really, it only had to be three, but um, I would gain the attention of this noble, and I would then take this here. So now I've got 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. See, I would have already ended the game if I was able to buy all that stuff, but that just wouldn't happen that quickly in a regular game. The cool part about this is, and the reason people liked it so much, other than these chips, is that... In a four-player game, these stacks get depleted quickly. People are taking one, 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 two, two, you know. So there's not that, at any one point, all the blues, reds, and greens might all be gone. So you're stuck with what you have over here and whatever's in your hand. And you got to buy something that you might not would have bought otherwise um, to try and wait for these chips to come back available. And all the while, you have to keep an eye on everybody's points to see if the game ends coming up and if you should abandon uh, your attempt to get the attention of one of the nobles. So, it's a really fun game. I still like it a lot. Uh, me and my eight-year-old son play it uh, pretty often. He enjoys it a lot. So, that is Splendor. Now, let's take a look at Century Spice Road. And uh, when I get done... You can decide whether you think Century has killed Splendor. Okay, so this is Century Spice Road. This is by Plan B Games. Uh, I don't see any awards on here, but I would not be surprised if some did come up in the near future. So, in Century Spice Road, you are uh, trading spices. And... Each of these cubes represents a different spice. If you're interested, the yellow is turmeric, the red is saffron, the green is cardamom, and the brown is cinnamon. But whenever we play, it's yellow, red, green, brown. Doesn't really make a difference. Um, so everyone will start with one of these caravan cards. The one with this symbol is the first player. You just shuffle them up and then deal them out. Um, the caravan can hold up to 10 different spices. That's it. That's the most you can have in this game, is 10. And I didn't mention it, but the same's true in Splendor. You can't have more than 10 of those chips at a time. So, <clears throat> this row here are cards that you can add to your hand uh, by just simply pulling them into your hand. But the further you go this way, you have to put spices from your caravan on the previous ones to pick up this one. So if I wanted this one, I'd have to put some spice here, here, and here, and then I can take this one. Then these would all shift over and get replaced. This row are the, um, basically the points cards. I'm not sure what the theme of it is, but you're uh, delivering the spices and you get victory points for doing so. And you know, the art's cool and all. <clears throat> it's not bad art at all. It's good art, but um, I don't know. I mean, the Golem edition, you know, looks a lot cooler. It's set in a fantasy world, but this one has some really cool, um, you know, structures and landmarks, real places. Um, so that's all good. <clears throat> the way this works is, you have to trade in spices from your caravan back into the supply and take the card. So this one would take one, two, three, four, five red. And you would take this and put it face down. Those are your points. Since you purchased the card all the way over here, you take one of these real metal, not real gold, but real metal coins. And that counts as an extra three points at the end of the game. And same goes for this stack. Obviously, if you purchase this one, you'll get one of these silver coins. It's worth one point at the end of the game. Um, then, once you've purchased something, regardless of where it comes from, everything shifts to the right, and then you replace it with the next card. So, the cards that were over here 
would eventually get you extra points. So if you see somebody's going for this one, do you really want to get this one? Because it's only for, worth eight plus the three extra. But if you take that, it's going to give them an extra point. You know, so that's one thing to think about when you're playing the game. So that that's the explanation of the bottom and the top rows. Everyone starts with two cards. And those two cards are two yellow, which when you play any card that just has the, the, the blocks there, the, uh, yeah, the block, the wooden, uh, what do they call these little things? The wooden, uh, blocks. <laughs> uh, so if I was to play this, I would take two from the supply. And everybody starts with a certain number. So the first player, I can't remember the exact number. So might start with two, and then the second will start with three, third with three, fourth with two yellows and a red, something like that. The later in the game you go, the more and better uh, resources you start with. So, like I said, if you play a card that just has the cubes, you'll put it down, take the cubes, put them in your caravan. Everybody else also starts with this two upgrade card. So what this does is, um, you can upgrade twice. And the reason they word it as upgrade twice is yellow upgrades to red, red to green, green to brown. The order is very important because you see how you have to pay here for these cards. So upgrade twice means you could upgrade a yellow to a red and then upgrade it again from a red to a green or you could upgrade two yellows to a red. So you have to think it think of it as two separate upgrade actions. So if I had this yellow cube in my caravan, I could upgrade it to a red. Then I could upgrade it again to a green. Okay? That would be my two upgrade actions. So those are two cards everybody starts with. Even playing field except for the the uh, cubes you start with at the beginning of the game. Then maybe I'll add this to my hand. All of these are very simple. It's basically you trade in this for this. And then somewhere in there there's a triple upgrade and some that give you different, you know, cubes. So um, it's very simple, but it's really a mind cruncher when you're playing it. So um, on your turn, you can do, let me see, you can play a card, you can get a card, you can purchase something, or you can rest. So there's four different things you can do. You can either, like I said, play one card from your hand and do what it says, or you can take a card from this row, paying anything you need to up into the cards you want from your caravan, or you can deliver spices to get victory points. And the last thing you do is rest. So once you've played your cards, they're no longer available to you until you rest. When you take the rest action, you pick up all the cards back into your hand and that's your entire turn. So all these actions are really quick. So you're constantly, it goes around the table really fast. I mean, there's occasional, you know, AP for some people, um, but it's really not that bad. Um, so that is, that's pretty much it. That's how you play Century Spice Road, and the same goes for uh, Century Golem Edition. It just has little gemstones and different artwork. So, you know, you can make the call if you think this game killed Splendor, but um, let's go up top and talk about that a little bit more. I'll give you my thoughts on it at least. All right, so there you go. That was Splendor and Century Spice Road. Yeah, they're similar that you've got to get resources in a certain pattern in order to purchase victory points. But Century Road, you know, obviously is very different because you're having to convert things into other things before you purchase things. But when people say that Spice Road is a Splendor killer, I don't think they're saying that it's just like it, um, but better. I think they're saying if they were going to play a game like that, 
they would play Century over Splendor. Now, I don't know how I feel about that. I really like Splendor. I know people are sick of hearing about these little poker chips, but there's just something about being able to sit there, you know, clack, 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 while you're playing. You can't really do that with the cubes, plus they're supposed to sit there on your caravan so everybody can see you don't have too many. You know, at the same time, you have to kind of keep an eye on everybody in Splendor. I'm, I'm guilty of constantly counting other people's chips like, oh, you got 11. So um, there's that. Uh, Splendor just feels more flowy to me. Uh, like it just comes naturally. It's a lot easier to spot opportunities. Whereas Century, you have to try to plan ahead and try to figure out how to get these conversions. What I always find myself doing in Century is overcomplicating things. Like I'm looking for a card that converts a certain type of cube into another type of cube to get a specific victory point, which isn't always a good idea because you could be investing all your time and energy into something that in the end someone else is going to snag before you. So, you know, it's just, it's just a different... It's a different style game altogether, in my opinion. Um, yeah, you're collecting resources to buy victory points in certain combinations, but it's a completely different head game. Um, so that's my opinion. I don't think Century Spice Road is a Splendor killer, and I, I got to check out Splendor with the Cities of Splendor expansion. I haven't done that yet. But um, I love Century Spice Road. I like Century Golem Edition a little bit better just because the artwork um, but the, and the crystals are cool, but the cups that the crystals come in are not, they're kind of a pain. I like the bowls. They're really easy to get the cubes out. Um, and I love Splendor. Um, I can play Splendor with my son a lot easier than I can play Century Spice Road. I've tried a couple times. He's only seven and he can't quite, uh, grasp the planning ahead for the conversions and everything. And even the conversions, you know, it's not a set in stone thing. So uh, like I said, you could be going for one thing and then the next minute it's not even available or not even an option. With Splendor, it's a little more predictable. Um, somebody might steal something, but usually there's something else you can go for or you can just grab a wild. That might be nice if in Century there was a wild spice. That even sounds good. Wild spice. And it could be anything. And make them hard to get or make make you commit to something to get that wild. I don't know. But I definitely don't think Century Spice Road is a Splendor Killer. Uh, tell me what you think down below in the comments. Uh, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. Uh, also check out GamingOnBoard.com. And we have a Facebook and Splendor account. You can find us by searching at GamingOnBoard. And uh, as always, thanks for watching and play all the games.